Hi, this is the final painting in my series of three uh, using my big brush and line technique. Um, it's a shed. Uh, I think it's from somewhere in, in the Isle of Wight, not sure where. Uh, it's just an old photo I had and, and I thought, well, I'll make a nice subject. Um, it's, it's a bit uneven as a subject, but uh, what I've tried to do is lead your eye in and round the painting. Um, and I'll show you how I did that during the painting technique. Again, uh, all the line work is using Indian ink and my bamboo pen with a bit of matchstick stuck in the end. Uh, the brushes, the main brush in this uh, video uh, is actually my half inch, or my inch rather, hake. Um, obviously the, the big, the big, <laughs> the big mop brush, which I love, and my two detailing brushes. Um, the colors are put in the description below, but they're all Winsor and Newton. Uh, and yeah, I think the important thing to, to note about this painting is, is making sure you get all the darks in the right place to lead your eye through. Uh, and we'll explain some of that on the way through this painting. So let's go and paint. Okay, so the idea of this painting is to create a sort of a, a wintry scene. And I'm going straight in quite strong with Conacredone gold over the sky area and through the grass. It's quite a bold move, and I love I love painting like this. I, I'm, I'm just gonna. I'm not even worrying about where the line is. The ink drawing is already done, um, so we can go quite. I suppose mad is not the right word, but you can be quite free uh, with your brush strokes at this point. Um, adding a little bit of red to the mix now, uh, to sort of an orangey colour over the hills, over the shed. Adding some red to the shed, warm it up towards the uh, the, the front of the picture. Um, bringing in that yellow again as a, as a sharp line um, and softening it. Uh, it it's like a sky wash like normally I guess um, adding a bit of red there to the corner to, to kind of bring your eye brown. Um, this area of the paint is going to be quite dark anyway because of the uh, the shadow from the wall so adding some contact and gold there uh, and just trying to make the brush strokes suggest a path through the painting at this point not really worrying about where they go um, or what they do adding in some blue for the flint of the wall there uh, and this is a Windsor uh, Windsor blue green shade um, and some red uh, permanent rose there mixing that straight into the blue and taking the red up to the just to the centre of the painting, um, adding some blue for the flint onto the shed. And using the brush, uh, the, the flat side of the brush, as, as, to get the biggest brush stroke as I can, um, you'll notice that the paint is sort of dripping into places, and I'm not too fussed about that either, just make a new mark to, to suggest some more shadow. Um, yeah, it, it, I love painting like this. Uh, so these dark colours now are a mix of all the other colours that are on the paper. And again, it's just to help, in a very brutal way, make you move into the painting around the shed uh, where the shadows are. I'm just adding some more colour there. It's all still wet into wet. There's no drying going on yet. Um, adding a sort of an orangey colour now to the shed, um, the brickwork. I quite like the roof at the moment, I have to say. Um, the shed inside is going to be quite dark, and we'll come back in a minute and do that. Uh, adding some more colour for the shadow to the front of the picture. Strengthening the corners to stop there being a sort of a, a light area there, I guess. Adding an interesting shadow effect to the mid-ground. Um, yeah, it's, it, I'm just darting around the painting really uh, as I see fit at this point um, adding in some dark onto the, the, the sort of stones that lead you into the uh, the walkway up to the shed um, and some more colour now just onto that roof uh, this is sort of the darker side of the, the, the shed but the roof will still be lighter at the end of the painting um, I think we're kind of getting to the end point of this first stage, adding some dark into that doorway. So this is a ultramarine blue now, um, and some more conacridone gold and, and the permanent red for the, the wood of the door. Two colours mingling there, uh, adding the same colour for the interior of, of the shed and using a damp brush now just to let the wash sort of sink to the bottom of the door. 
some quite strong colour here. Not sure if this is always a good idea, but some nice strong colour now just to create a path through that wall, breaking it up the sort of tones uh, and using this swiping action that I've come quite fond of really, just to move the paint into the general direction where I want it. These are really strong colours um, and, and I feel that you can do this with pen and washes. It's not something you could do with a normal watercolour maybe. It probably wouldn't wouldn't look natural not that this looks natural um but i'm just i'm just making marks here interesting shapes and colors mixing letting the paint mix on the page and it drip into areas where it probably shouldn't uh, it's it it i love this stage of the painting i have to say it's it's very very free um very loose uh and yeah i i there comes a point where they have to let it dry and I think we're getting to that point uh, so let's let it dry so the painting's dry now and I'm going to put in the a sort of a bluey colour uh, for the background of this picture again it's quite strong but it will dry lighter I hope <laughs> uh, this is uh, ultramarine uh, blue uh, rather than the uh, the French uh, the Windsor blue green shade um, it's, it's again it's a strong color but it, it contrasts nicely to the the color of the shed at the moment so i'm trying to bring the shed out of the background uh, doing this lovely swiping action to suggest sort of tree form in there adding some more dark blue the water color here is sort of uh, milky in consistency i would say it's not a wet wash it's a it's a milky wash i'm um, testing out a, a greeny color now this is um to produce some sort of bushes that we're running along there the, Bit, bit sort of clearer looking brushes I'm not worried again against the bottom line just making some sort of jaggedy marks against the bottom line there a few light marks left in the wash just to indicate some sort of uh, highlights in there uh, these colors at this point are still quite milky in consistency going into the blue now of uh, the background there was the green just to put some more bushes behind the shed um, and as you can see, the watercolour is doing what it's meant to be doing. You've got light against dark, dark against light. It brings out that shed really well into uh, into the foreground. And I guess we need to paint the interior of that shed again, make it nice and dark um, because there's no light in that shed. Uh, put some nice dark colour in there and then a wet brush, just a damp brush now, just to let the colour mingle down so it gets lighter towards the, the bottom part of the doorway. Moving on to the next step now, which is to add some, some more tone to the shed, um, the wall there. Um, and this is, a, this is a kind of a mix of uh, permanent rose and French ultramarine, uh, leaving a very small spit of light down the right hand side of the shed. I'm not worrying about covering the shed up completely as you can see, I'm just leaving little highlights for brickwork that might be standing out there and that's that spit of light I was talking about, just a gentle uh, little extra bit of light just to pull it away from the, the, the green of the trees behind uh, and again finishing it off there, making some sort of brick marks and then adding a bit to the shadow uh, of this shed because it is in quite a high contrast of shadow there. Um, like I say, I love painting like this. It's quite nice and dark and makes some bold marks here, some real real bold colours. Um, going with a slightly lighter colour now, uh, just as a background shadow, because I felt the background needed something just to break up that big colour of, of, of space and, and greenness there. Bringing that shadow a bit forward, further forward. Um, these these shadows are a bit strange because they, they, there's nothing ref sort of casting them um, but they do help to bring out the stonework uh, this could be clouds in the sky I guess I'm gonna I'm gonna say that's what they are um, they're clouds in the sky <laughs> you can make it up it's, it's my picture I, I can I can uh, I can do what I like with it I guess uh, putting the roof in now of this shed uh, this is ultramarine blue sort of flinty sort of roof there um, trying not to get the wash into the uh the green uh, the to the green the red of the shed <laughs> um, making some brickwork tiles there leaving little marks and stuff and i should probably go over that again i would imagine um adding some more dark into the doorway the windows 
bits of uh, slate that are forming some of the path. Adding that, I felt that wall needed a bit dark there because um, it is in quite dark sort of shadow. This is Conacridone Gold now coming in to represent some of that grass across the, the edge there. Um, you notice there's a slight leak of, of paint from the, the bush behind, and I'm just, uh, just wiped that out. And there's going to be a shadow there anyway, so I'm not too worried about that. The shadow's from the tree. Um, I like uh, I like quite like the tree in this picture. Uh, just sucking out some of the moisture in that uh, that bush at the back there before it starts to spread and cauliflower. Now the wall. This is um, this is one of those tricky things. Uh, I'm not following uh, the pitch or anything here. I am just picking out the gaps between the stones. Sometimes I make the stones darker where they sort of sink back. It's one of those old um, sort of walls uh, with no, nothing holding it together, just stones stacked on top of one another. And I'm trying to bring that feel through here. Again, I'm mixing the colours up a bit. So we had blue, now I'm going in with the permanent rose, the reddy colour. Um, again, it's just filling in the gaps, making it try to make sense, bringing out some, some, some of the lighter stonework going over some of the stones um, to suggest that they're sort of catching the light, um, bringing in the, the bottom of the, the grass, the bank that will be overhanging this wall, um, and, and just generally trying to, to get a feeling of a wall there really, rather than actually painting the wall. Um, I'm, I am sort of watching where the pen line is, but as you can see I'm also filling in some of the the stonework as well um, to create more texture into those stones. Moving through the gaps again and working my way across the wall really it's it's, it's more of the same unfortunately. Um, but yeah just trying to, to sort of make an impression of a wall rather than actually a proper wall. Uh, there's a bit of a gap there, uh, adding some tone to the bottom of these big slaty rocks that are forming the path. Uh, again, these colours are all sort of ultramarine blue or a permanent rose, just swapping the colours over. And now pulling out that shadow from that wall, uh, again, making areas of that grass with spaces and, and bits and pieces in there that where the light is sort of striking I suppose overgrown bits of grass. Uh, the bottom of the wall is, is not dry at this point so it's merging into that shadow as well and I think that helps um, helps your painting a lot. Uh, and it's unfortunate that these shadows are actually pointing you out of the picture. Uh, I've realised that after I painted this but uh, you know it, it, these sort of marks I always use to, to usually help myself around the painting to put the viewer to eye where I want it to go. Um, Obviously, I wanted them to go out of the painting this time. And I always use that as an excuse. If someone says something to you, say, oh, you know, that's what I wanted. I wanted the viewer's eye to leak out of the painting. So to correct that, I'm going to put some more shadow on the right-hand side of the painting, just in this bottom right-hand corner. Just to, It just seems to just move your eye up into the painting. Um, and that was a dark mix of uh, Conacridone Gold and French Ultramarine Blue. So this is the last bit of the painting now. Um, and while I've looked at this, I've decided I want to make the sky just a little bit darker, like the bottom uh, right-hand corner of the grass, just moving some blue paint into the painting on the edges there, uh, just to stop your eye wandering out of the picture. Um, unfortunately, once you start to wet watercolour paper, you really have to put it all over. Uh, a bit more blue there in that top left-hand corner, uh, and just bring that across the painting. Now this is the darks, this is the bit I love, this is the last stage of the painting. A little bit of blue in that gap there uh, just to suggest some sort of form or wall behind there that we can't see. Very simply done, not worrying too much about what it actually says, it's just a sort of a, a mark really. And here we go, some of the eaves of the shed and I'm not trying to draw an even line here, I'm I'm trying to create a sort of an uneven edge, uh, sort of very old roof, very old building, bricks and stuff sticking out from the uh, from the edge. Um, so this this doesn't cast a, a uniform shadow. Um, 
across the building um the shadow there of the door uh, a bit odd that it would be there but i guess i felt that would be the thing to do at the time um, I probably wouldn't have put that in now if I'd thought about it, but there you go. Uh, actually, it actually helps to, to bring your eye to that uh, the pathway up to the shed anyway, so it's quite a nice mark. A bit more colour into the doorway to suggest the darkness inside there. And indeed some colour onto the door to suggest the planks of wood that uh, are the door. And using that colour again into that dark shape as well, adding harmony to the picture. moving along now to the wall again adding a bit more dark to that wall it just wasn't quite dark enough um, it would have been really dark at that point so let's added that and it's got some nice contrast there and on those cornerstones there just adding a bit more contrast and bringing some more blue uh, through there to suggest some sort of uneven rockiness um, just what I'm going to call it uneven rockiness Uh, moving into this tree now this tree is interesting I'm putting some blue onto the shadow side of the tree this is ultramarine blue at this point and then bringing the shadow across uh, the painting I'm going to add some more colors here uh, now this is um, ultramarine and permanent rose into the tree uh, making a nice sort of dark side to it give it some real shape and form it's got to uh, compete with that dark underneath the eave of the shed so that's why it needs to be dark um, using some damp brush technique now just to mix the colors in there the, the damp brush has got a little bit of quinacridone gold in it uh, to indicate some sort of greenery onto the, the, the tree going over one or two of the branches now that I drew in with pen um, just to thicken them up, um, I felt like a wintry tree, it just needed a little bit more sort of, sort of it had to feel like a tree. Uh, so we added a, a few more strokes there just to make it feel um, thicker. Darting back into that, I'm obsessed with that, core. it needs to be dark, it's, it's, my brain keeps telling me it needs to be dark, darker. So adding a bit more colour into that section of the painting. Um, a few more darks onto the edges of these stones and back into the wall again uh, just adding some more darks where I think it needs them just to stop the eye from sitting um, on on the wall uh, these little dabs of color help you to um, to move through that wall um, and towards the, the picture of the shed so there you go uh, the finished painting thank you for watching